Oh. Oh, hey. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, <laughs> awkward. Uh, so today's video uh, brought to you by uh, yours truly. Uh, we're going to be showing you how to set up your own Minecraft server, uh, even if it's just a private one that you want to be able to play no matter where you are. I'm going to be showing you how to set it up one with Docker. We're also going to be using Portainer and Nginx Proxy Manager. And the reason we're using Nginx Proxy Manager is because I want to control the traffic that's coming into my server and I've tested it with Nginx Proxy Manager and there doesn't seem to be any sort of delay or any reason not to use it. So I wanna show you how to do it um, just so you have some experience and you can take this sort of experience and apply it to other software too. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I'm just going to hit a couple of more blocks and then you know I'll go ahead and get to, all right, fine, all right, fine. I'll quit, I'll quit. All right, so let's do this. Uh, the first place that I'm going to start is with this cool little GitHub right here. And uh, if you zoom in just a little bit, uh, it is going to be the uh, the GitHub uh, slash ITZG slash a Docker dash Minecraft server. And his whole project is just about creating an easy to deploy Minecraft server. You don't need to jump in there and, and do a whole bunch of, of um, of server customizations and everything else that you would normally have to do. And you can really just spin it up. Um, even if it's just like a locally hosted server, uh, it works really well. I'm also going to show you some customizations that we can do with it. But first off, let's let's start at the very beginning. I am going to do, let's do the quick start. There is a surprising a little bit of information that we need to get running and we can have our server up in really no time at all. Uh, I'm going to change a little bit of things, but I'll show you what I mean uh, in a second. Let's copy this little sucker right here and let's head off to our container. We are going to go to stacks and we're going to add a new stack. I'm just going to call this MC server. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it Minecraft or whatever. And let's paste this in here. So since I do want to control the volume uh, that is going to be created, and I want to know exactly where my server and my world is going to be stored, I am going to change something a little bit about the way that we that we uh, store our data. And I'll show you what I mean. Let's zoom on in here and let's take a look at this. Let's start at the very beginning. We are going to start with, um, we're going to be pulling the image of the Minecraft server. That's fine. If you want, we can also add latest in here. That way you always get the latest version or you can just leave it on its own. It's fine. Uh, TTL, that's fine. Uh, and this is just uh, for opening the, I believe the console. And, and that's that's cool. It'll give you all that information when we start. One thing we are going to change is the ports. So we are going to be piping our information through Nginx proxy manager. This is optional. <laughs> Totally optional because if you did want to learn it locally, just leave this the way that it is and just connect to the to the IP address of your server using this port right here. But if you do want to pipe it through Nginx Proxy Manager, maybe you wanted to give it a name or a certificate or something. I don't really know. Um, I just think it's a fun little project and there doesn't seem to be any downside to, uh, to piping it through there. So I'm going to comment this out and if there if you've ever done this and, and you're you're finding that Nginx Proxy Manager is giving you problems or you don't really like this, let me know down below and uh, I'd be interested to, to kind of find out your experiences too. Uh, EULA is true. That's cool. And now we're going to get to our, our volumes. Let's do this. I'm going to be removing this uh, period slash um, out of there so that we can create our own uh, mapped uh, volumes. And then when I hit enter, I'm going to backspace a couple of times and I'm going to just say um, volumes colon and then I'm going to give it a couple of tabs and I'm just going to call it data and then colon. So this will create a volume under our portainer that is underneath its normal structure. That way we don't have to really guess where the world has been created. We'll know because we can always just go to volumes. I think that's just a lot easier to keep up with. Right, let's do this. Let's see how it goes. Let's deploy our environment. Okay, okay, we are done. And if we go under our 
containers here. Let's go under our MC server. Let's check out the log. So if you click on this little log button right here, we'll be able to, to see exactly what's going on with our Minecraft server. And right now we're doing kind of the, the, the first runs type of stuff. We're unpacking the environment. We're creating stuff. We're spawning up monsters. We're, uh, you know, basically starting to listen with our server. You can see all that at the very bottom here. So we're preparing our world. So check it out. We're preparing the spawn area. And as soon as that gets to 100%, we're good to go. You see, I have our Archon server listening. That's fine. We don't have a port mapped to that, which means nothing's going to be able to really get there uh, until we um, we set that up. But that's where I want to I want to show you something really quirky that we can do. Let's do this. Uh, I'm going to go to my containers and I'm going to go ahead and join my Nginx proxy manager to the same network as my Minecraft server. I'm going to make my head a little bit smaller. And if we drop this down, we have our MC server underscore default. We're going to join that. And now we need to set up our host name. Let's go to advanced DNS under our uh, name cheap uh, name server. And if you're using something different, that's fine. Uh, the, the verbiage will be very similar. It'll, we're just going to be creating an A record. So however you go about doing that, totally up to you. I find it just a little easier to do it with the name cheap. It's very, very fast too. Let's do this. I'm going to add a new record. I'm going to add an A record. I'm going to call this NC and I'm going to use the external IP address of my server. Let's save these changes. And now uh, our subdomain is going to be called mc.senhow.com. Remember that because we are going to need it at a later date. There will be a quiz. All right, so let's jump uh, back over to Portainer and we're going to do something very interesting here. Uh, let's jump over and I want to get that, that port number that we were just commented out and I'll show you why here in a second. If we go under our stacks and under our editor, and let's just copy this port. And I've noted that both of them are the same, so I don't have to remember that this one maps to this one or whatever. So uh, after you have that, let's go over to our containers. What we're going to be doing next is a little different. We are going to be setting up a stream. And what that is, is basically a another port that will be going through Nginx Proxy Manager. However, it is not the typical ones that you would use for a website. It's not the, the 80, um, port 80 or 443. So in order for us to do that, we have to open that port up to Nginx Proxy Manager as a public facing port. I hope that makes sense. If we click into our Nginx Proxy Manager and let's click on edit or duplicate and edit. And let's add an additional port mapping. I'm going to add an additional port map right here. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to map the port that I just copied to the container port right there. So I'm make, making sure that they're the same. And this will make sense in just a second. So just hang on with me. That's all the changes that we're going to need to make. But basically, if you are hosting this server on a VPS, like uh, like Racknerd or something, uh, or something that's internet facing, uh, then this is pretty much the only thing you have to do. Um, if you are hosting it internally and you want to expose it to the to the web, you may have to do some port forwarding with your router and, and add some additional ports there. But that's kind of beyond the scope of this video. All right, so we've opened up that port. Let's hit on deploy container and we're going to hit replace. Sweet. All done there. Cool. So you'll notice that we have a couple of additional uh, ports open. Oh, we have this one right here. And this was is port. It's opening this public facing port, this 25565 to an internal point, a uh, port of 25565. And I know you're probably like, what in the world? What? Why did I do that? And I'm going to show you here in a second. Let's jump over to our Nginx proxy manager. And once we are here, let's go under our proxy hosts. 
and let's do this. Let's click on doo -doo -doo -doo, posts at the top and then streams. We don't have any streams currently defined, which, you know, is pretty typical. Let's create a new stream. So I'm going to add a stream. And I'm, it's asking me for an incoming port and it's asking what traffic or what port should the the traffic be coming into. And that is the the port that was on the right hand side of of that uh, colon. So if you look back here uh, and we take a look, it is going to be this port right here. That's going to be the port that's going to be looking for that traffic. So let's do this. Let's paste that port right there. And now it's saying, OK, well, I got that. Uh, where do you want this traffic to be going to? And we want it to be going to a Minecraft server. So let's go back over to our, our containers here and let's copy the the uh, container name, which is the MC server. We're going to be copying that little guy over to our uh, Nginx proxy manager. So let's do that. Let's go back over here and let's go paste that port or paste that container name. And now it's saying, OK, well, um, on what port? What you know, where should I be piping this traffic to? Again, it's going to be the same one. And that is going to be the 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 port that the Minecraft server container is listening on. And that was defined back on our stacks. Same spot, right? So let me just show you real quick. Just so you don't think that I'm a crazy person. We go under editor. That is going to be this port right here. We commented it out, but it doesn't mean that this container is still not listening on that port for traffic. It just means that there's no direct route from the external interface to that port. We've commented to that. We've said no. Uh, we're making all the traffic go through this middleman, which is our Nginx proxy manager. This is going to be using TCP because that is the only one that we specified. Uh, if you did decide, uh, you know, you had something, some port that you wanted to do like UDP on, well, like maybe you were running a DNS server or something, that's also a great reason to be doing this. That's why we're really covering the streams. It's not so so much that you can create a Minecraft server and run it through Nginx Proxy Manager, which you can, but it really helps you if you have to to pipe traffic through, you know, non-standard. Uh, 80, port 80, or 443. I hope that makes sense. Again, comment section if it doesn't. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Let us go ahead and save this. All right, once that is done, cool beans. We are now doing a little bit of, of, of port forwarding through our Nginx proxy manager. And that's just really honestly the port. The point of this is just really to show you how that we can filter all the traffic through this one container, basically making this guy our middleman instead of exposing a bunch of random containers to the internet, all willy nilly like. All right, so now comes the fun part. Let's test it out. <laughs> all right, so let's go to our multiplayer. And I didn't think I'd be able to uh, to start playing uh, Minecraft on this channel, but here we go. And let's go ahead and add a server. And I'm going to be calling this the Sin How. I can't type MC server and the address that we're going to use instead of an IP address. We're going to be trying out that host name that we set up our subdomain. That's the uh, was it MC dot I think that's what we made it. And let's hit done. And let's try to connect. Here we go. We are in and like check it out. There's really no delay. I mean, like it's it's Honestly, if you see any sort of like uh, like drawing delay, it's most likely because of my the settings on my client. Uh, but if you decide if you do decide, hey, you know, we're seeing some some like like slowness on the server, uh, you can actually specify additional memory for your Minecraft server uh, using environment variables. So if you are interested in that, let me show you that real quick before we break. I uh, would love to keep playing Minecraft and making you guys watch me, but that's probably not why you're here. All right, let's do this. If we jump back, uh, you do have uh, server properties via container environment variables. So you see that at the very bottom right here. Let's click on on that little link. 
And there's all sorts of stuff that you can customize about your Minecraft server by just changing a little bit of the environment variables. Very easy to do. Uh, there is, I believe there is a memory one here too. Let's look for that. There's all sorts of stuff. Like check it out. Like you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with this. So if you want to find the memory settings, just go up here to search and let's just type in memory. We have our memory limit. And here is our environment variables that we will be using to customize the, the maximum uh, memory that this server can run. I think currently it's defaults to, I believe, one gig, uh, but you can change that. Very easy to do. The only thing you would do is you come in here and be like, OK, so I got my init memory, uh, one gig and my max memory is, is four gigs. So I can copy that sucker. I can come back over here to my portainer. And um, under this environment tag there, I'm just going to hit enter. I'm going to paste these two. Uh, make sure that your spacing is correct. Otherwise, you'll get that little red ugly message about your syntax. And there we go. We got our syntax all corrected. And if you take a closer look, my initial memory is one gig with a maximum of four. So if your server does have that capability, hey, throw some memory at it. Java loves memory. Uh, you'll just hit update stack and update. There we go. Our server's firing up. If we did have any sort of slowdown or anything, it should be fixed by throwing a little bit of memory at it. But honestly, I haven't really noticed too much of a lag, and I was running this on a uh, one of my Rack Nerd uh, uh, like VPSs and it ran fine. I mean, I was the only one there, but I mean, it did really well. So if uh, so, yeah, I hope that was fun and beneficial and you learned something today, especially about forwarding ports in uh, Nginx Proxy Manager. And I hope that was a, a fun way of, of learning about that. And uh, if you are uh, kind of renewing your obsession with Minecraft like I am, then uh, I hope you enjoy having your own private Minecraft server uh, that you can access wherever you want to. <laughs> All right. Well, I really appreciate you guys watching the video and I hope you have a good rest of your day. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you found this video helpful or entertaining, consider giving me a thumbs up. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Take care.